Welcome back. I would like to talk about obstacle avoidance with potential field method. Actually, it is a gradient descent method, but within the context of motion planning, we just call this method as the potential field. You are going to see why. I am considering a robot with double integrator dynamics, and I am choosing the control signal for x-axis like this minus alpha x minus cx this is the damping of the velocity x is the position cx is the command uh, you may generate this command um, using a non-parametric model or uh, waypoints i described this in the previous video so i'm not going to dive into the, those details here and likewise this is the control signal for ui which has this uh, position command for R, for Y to approach the CX. This is the um, damping for the velocity on the Y axis. And these here are the additional constraints that we are going to add to avoid obstacles. All right, so in a gradient descent approach, you need a cost function like this, and you need to have a negative and it's gradient. So in this case, this cost depending on X and Y, and uh, it is gradient is two by one, dV over dx and dV over dy. I am going to explain in a second why we choose it like this. But before doing that, I would like to generate um, these additional control signals, forces like mu x to be the minus k multiplied by dv over dx and mu y is the minus k dv over dy i need to choose also this function rho and i am going to choose it as a metric that captures how close you are to the distance uh, to the obstacle let's say obstacle is located at phi x and phi y and your vehicle is located at x and y position this row just captures the distance metric that how far you are away from this um, obstacle and we would like the hitting uh, obstacle so we need to avoid obstacle so if you are sufficiently close to the obstacle which is what we mean by sufficiently characterized by this d term if your distance is less than d then these functions mu x and mu y are activated if you are away from the obstacle basically mu x and mu uh, y are zero now let me explain why i choose this v now if you take this distance metric and put it inside v and plot uh, I am just plotting with respect to x minus phi x. You can also generate a plot which is based on y minus phi y. So as you see, the origin is x equals to phi of x. The reason th this function, I choose this function, is that this function blows up. It goes to infinity as you approach to its origin, which is x equals to phi x. And I am going to prove that I am going to show a stability proof. Prove that you, if I prove that if V is bounded, meaning that it cannot approach the infinity, then X can, uh, then X minus V X cannot go to the origin, meaning that we will avoid this. So we are we avoid hitting to the um, obstacle, both in X and Y directions. By the way, if you increase D that appears here. You, you are going to have a uh, more, let me put it, more fat uh, function. If you select D to be small, you are basically, this will be more tight towards the, the uh, V axis. All right, so to implement, you need to calculate DV over DX and DV over DY, which is here for this row function. Uh, if you use that row function inside here, dv over dx becomes this, just taking the partial derivative. And here we also have d rho over dx, which is simply x minus phi x. So you can simply change x with y to obtain how the gradient dv over dy looks like. All right, so I hope all is clear. Let me um do an energy function based analysis 
oh, before doing that, I forgot to mention, right? So people call it, this is repulsive uh, differential cost, meaning that, you know, if you approach to here, it pushes you back. That's why uh, in motion planning, uh, it is called, this, this idea is called obstacle avoidance with potential field. But uh, mathematically speaking, it is just another application of the gradient descent approach since we have a cost function and applying negative of this gradient uh, to prevent obstacles. Just something to keep in mind. All right. I am considering this energy function uh, which is a Lyapunov like function and it is a positive definite function I am going to look at uh, it is derivative so we have a function like this this is e depending on various factors but let me put it here x minus cx if I show that e dot is less than or equal to zero then I am basically moving towards the origin uh, such that we can do comment following velocities uh, both for x dot and y dot going to zero and more importantly if we show that e dot less than or equal to zero this means um, the signals used in this energy function are bounded meaning that v is bounded when v is bounded as i mentioned we can avoid uh, <coughs> x minus v to approach to here such that x can never touch to the obstacle likewise y uh, cannot touch to the uh, obstacles position in the y direction. <coughs> All right. So we are taking the first derivative. We obtain uh, this form. Okay, you can stop the video. I am just going to the uh, analysis, uh, but you can stop the video and uh, understand those equations. I try to write them uh, in a clear way. So here, x dot we need x dot dot and y dot dot so i am inserting here x dot multiplied by the x dot dot which is the ux control on the x-axis likewise we need y dot dot i am also inserting this y dot dot which is the um, u for the uh, x-axis you are going to see that this term will cancel out with this term this will cancel out with this and finally these two terms will cancel out with these two terms and at the end of the day, you have this nice, uh, simple form, beta over alpha multiplied by x dot to the power of 2 and beta over alpha y dot to the power of 2 less than or equal to zero, 0. We cannot say asymptotic stability. This means that we have Lyapunov stability, which says that boundedness of x, y, x dot, y dot, and v. As I uh, tried to mention at the beginning of this analysis, boundedness of V implies that V cannot be infinity. So rho of X cannot be zero. We cannot touch to the obstacle, meaning obstacle avoidance is met. But let's look um, more to this energy function. By the way, um, I am using uh, in a second LaSalle's invariance principle and Barbara's lemma. And I know... Um, if you are uh, feeling that those uh, you don't know them or you want to remember them, you can watch Lyapunov Stability and more on the lecture playlist, Advanced Control Systems. All right, so LaSalle's invariance principle tells that uh, x dot and y dot will go to zero, meaning that, right, motion stops. We are looking at the case what happens when e dot is zero. So basically, we see that when v dot e dot is zero, x dot and y dot needs to be zero. S t goes to infinity. Now, since x dot and y dot have finite limits at infinity, and x dot dot and y dot dot uniformly continues, I didn't show here uh, x dot dot y dot not uniformly continues because it is really straightforward. Just take the derivative of x dot 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 y dot 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 and you are going to see that uh, there will be a bunch of derivatives at that point but their denominator will be uh, depending on rho y and x and since we just showed that rho y and x cannot be zero we can say we can easily show that x dot 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 and y dot 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 are uh, bounded, which informs, which implies that x dot dot and y dot dot are uniformly continuous. So now from Barbalas lemma, again to learn from Barbalas lemma, check this video. 
x dot dot and y dot dot terms going to zero as t goes to infinity now let's look at what happens when x goes to infinity now this side is zero this is zero from lasalle these are zero from barbalat so we end up having um, as as t goes to infinity zero equals to this comment following term minus this uh, potential function to avoid obstacles likewise this term for example if you are sufficiently away from any obstacles these terms will drop out then the x will be equal to cx and um this should be y y should be equal to cx cy as well so the punchline is this uh, analysis shows that we follow cx and cy when obstacles are not present of course if you if there is an obstacle on the point on the top of the point that you want to reach you will never follow so i am going to video here and uh, in the next video you are going to see a matlab example how i caught this for obstacle avoidance